Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. And developing right now on the city's northwest side, a man barricaded himself at a house after police say he set a vehicle on fire. It's happening on Stonehaven off of Litchfield on the city's northwest side. Stephanie Cerna is there and she has what police are saying started this whole thing. Well, Ursula fire crews were initially called out to this neighborhood for a vehicle that was on fire. And when they got here, police say the man that started that fire barricaded himself in a house. Arson investigators are on the scene. SWAT is also here, but police say they do have negotiators here so they can resolve this peacefully. Now we are being kept at this distance for our safety. Right now we can hear the negotiators trying to talk the man out. Of course, we will keep you updated on air and online as we get more information. We are reporting on the northwest side. Stephanie Cerna, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Stephanie. A group of burglars has made a less than clean getaway. Although they escaped from police, they left a mess behind outside of a bank on the far west side overnight. They destroyed the ATM in the drive through of the Chase Bank on Petrenko Road, and it's near Loop 1604. And as Katrina Weber reports, it's still unclear whether all their efforts paid off. At an hour when this bank was closed, someone tried to make an illegal withdrawal at this ATM. San Antonio police found out from a security company monitoring the bank in the 10,800 block of Petrenko. And when they arrived before four this morning, they realized the target was the entire machine. They say three people in a pickup used a chain to yank it off its foundation, then pried open the front with a crowbar. The burglars left the broken and battered bank machine behind with checks from it scattered on the ground. The million dollar question this whole time has been whether those burglars were able to get any money out of this machine. Because it's been faced down, police weren't able to tell. But the arrival of this Brinks truck suggests that they left the cash behind. They also left their truck abandoned just down the road. Police found another crowbar and sledgehammer there. They spent some time searching the pickup for other evidence and searching the bushes nearby for a discarded ski mask. Their hope now is to find the men who broke open this machine so they can close this case. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A man facing several charges after police say he robbed someone using a machete and then later got into a standoff with police. Police were called to the 1100 block of South Geavers on February 3rd. They tell us a person was robbed by someone he knew, 27-year-old Jacob Saucedo. The suspect is accused of taking money from the victim and then threatening him with a machete. Officers were called to the location again this week to investigate a disturbance call. When officers got there, Saucedo was in the backyard with a gun in his hand. Police say he pointed the gun at them. The officers took cover behind a parked vehicle. Eventually, the suspect dropped his weapon and was taken into custody. He's facing several charges, including attempted capital murder of a police officer and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. A former house parent at a children's foster home is accused of sexually assaulting a child. 40-year-old Pablo Cosme Briones Jr. charged with aggravated sexual assault of a child. Police say that he was a house parent at Boysville back in 2015. Officers say a girl who was nine years old at the time told them that the suspect took her into an office and sexually assaulted her. Police started investigating after they were contacted by Child Protective Services last month. That's when CPS says the girl came forward. A driver dies after a rollover crash on the northwest side, and this noon, police are releasing his name. San Antonio police say he is 21-year-old Abdullah Al-Gurabi. Officers say the 20-year-old was driving on Camp Bullis near Babcock when he lost control. This was around 11 last night. The police say the driver hit a tree when airborne before crashing into a van in the Lutheran High School parking lot. Police say witnesses helped pull the man out of the car, but when EMS arrived, he was pronounced dead at the scene. Police taking a man away in handcuffs, accused of attacking his father with a machete. Officers say it happened around 930 last night in the 7100 block of New Laredo Highway. Police tell us it started with an argument, but they have not said what sparked that argument. The father has a cut on his hand, but he is expected to be OK. This noon, the search continues for this person. Police think this man robbed a Southside convenience store at gunpoint. The suspect was seen at the Yon Food Store in the 5200 block of Flores Street back on December 29th. The police say the suspect got mad after the clerk was unable to open the cash register and fired several shots at the front door. He then drove off in a gray four-door Ford Taurus. 
If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. In the day ahead, Connect SA officials will be giving recommendations and funding possibilities to City Council. Connect SA is an initiative that focuses on transportation as a means of opportunity in our city. Today, staff will give more details on 25 projects they want the city to start by 2015, rather 2025. Some of those include fixing sidewalks, creating more trails, creating a more robust public transportation system, and limiting traffic congestion as the city continues to grow. Connect SA shows all of their projects will cost $1.36 billion over the next five years. Community and business leaders gathered this morning for the San Antonio Independent School District State of the District Address. This after the superintendent spoke with KSAT earlier this week about his plans to push forward with a $1.25 billion bond that would help with campus improvements. KSAT 12 Sarah Costa was at the address this morning and she has the highlights and reaction. Academic improvements to campus building challenges were the focus of San Antonio Independent School District's State of the District by Superintendent Pedro Martinez Wednesday morning. Martinez says the report card from the state was a good one with a B rating. Considering that in 2016, the Texas Education Agency gave SAISD an F. Martinez says with those academic improvements, bring other needs. I want the classrooms to match the academics. I'm seeing the instruction. I'm seeing the results. I'm seeing the aspirations being built. It doesn't match up to the buildings. Martinez is proposing a plan that would ask voters to approve a 2020 bond in November that will cost roughly $1.25 billion for the $2 billion needed in improvements. Martinez believes that the bond will not require a tax increase and that the downtown development boom will cover it. That development, whether it's apartment buildings, office buildings, new housing that's coming up, that development is what's going to fund this future growth. The San Antonio Chamber president and CEO says he is hopeful that the bond can be done without a tax dollar increase. I do believe that uh, it can happen because generally when a, a, an entity says that they're not going to raise taxes, we have held their feet to the fire and they do not raise taxes. He says those students are the ones that come back and work in our city. So Pettis believes as a community, we need to give them the tools to succeed. And while it sounds like a lot, it's what we need. You know, as you've heard, half of the schools have not been touched in 20 years. So they're old, they're decrepit. And in order for our kids to succeed, we need to invest in them. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. The Children's Hospital of San Antonio now has security robots. The newest members of the security team will be patrolling the grounds outside the hospital. The robots made their official debut this morning. They're equipped with cameras and can communicate with the rest of the security team. These robots are also programmed to respond to patient questions. If you have to talk to a security officer, a human being, you'll be able to stop the robot, press a button, and it has the capability of doing two-way audio. It also has some very uh, has some uh, generic messaging, like um, you know, welcome messages and say hi. And then it also is programmed to stop and allow people to take pictures with the robot. So if a child wants to take a selfie with the robot, it's doing that as well. Here is. If you see them out there, the robots do have names. They are Lightning Willie and Captain Violet. Hey, you know, there are a lot of ways to enhance your trip to Wolf Stadium to watch some minor league baseball, but how about some major league barbecue? Larry Ramirez with a taste of what's coming up this season. Another day, more cruise ship chaos. Dozens of new cases of coronavirus have now been confirmed on the Diamond Princess. This comes just as passengers are finally released. The death toll from the outbreak now stands at 2,000 plus. ABC's Julia McFarlane has more. After two weeks of mandatory quarantine on the Diamond Princess cruise, freedom at last for some of the ship's passengers docked in Japan. Police vehicles and specialists in hazmat suits seen escorting passengers off the stricken ship and onto buses heading away from the port. Of the original 3,700 passengers, more than 500 contracted the virus while on board. But none are immediately headed for the U.S. A new travel restriction announced by the CDC bars the passengers from traveling to the States until they are symptom-free for another 14-day period. 
Meantime, 13 evacuees from that same ship who flew to Omaha, Nebraska, continue their isolation. They'll be there for at least two weeks. In California, American Ken Burnett was reunited with his wife and two kids, finally out of his two-week quarantine. Meanwhile, in China, state officials announcing the virus death toll has now reached more than 2,000 people. This as officials also announced the rate of daily new cases appeared again to be slowing and was put at just over 1,700. Meanwhile, a cruise ship worker from Oregon has lost his job for breaking quarantine and heading home after a passenger on his vessel that docked in Cambodia tested positive for the virus. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. Outside with live cam, it's gone up a whole two degrees since six o'clock this morning, mm -hmm. like 48, now it's 50. Ooh. We've been stuck at 50 for yeah. two or three hours now. It's not gonna change much. We're gonna see temperatures right around that number as we go into the afternoon. The aquifer is down two tenths of a foot to 673.5. And your pollen count, mold not surprisingly jumped up. It's in 1980, a little counts of juniper, ash, and elm. We've got some rain out there. We're gonna take a look at the radar and talk about when it's gonna warm up. Coming up. We've been watching the weather all morning long, hoping it was going to you know, do something different. Get a little warmer, maybe the sun come out. Nope. Um, <laughs> you were right. It's not going <laughs> to. No, we'll be lucky if we get maybe like two more degrees there on the, the high temperature. We're stuck right at 50 degrees and with the rain and the cloud cover. That's pretty much what yeah. we're looking for today and tomorrow. It is what way. it is, y'all. Oh, look, it just went up to 51. Woo! There you go. There you go. See? Got That's warmer. Celebration. Uh, let's take a look at the radar. Uh, we've got some showers out there right now. These are pretty light, but we haven't seen a whole lot uh, here in San Antonio, at least over the last couple of hours until now. And so this action is starting to move off to the north. You'll see a little bit of a downpour with this. We've seen some wet roads. We've seen that on Trans Guide. And uh, these are lifting off to the north. And we may get a break in the action after these pass by. But uh, still some drizzle out there. We've seen that off and on. Even if you can't see it on radar, it may still be there in the form of just some light drizzle. We've seen some more moderate showers off to the east along I-10 north of Gonzales and then some pretty persistent rain well to our north, uh, north of the hill country there. And most of that is going to stay to our north today. So we're not looking for any big rainfall totals or anything like that. This is all going to be very, very light. And you see the big picture here. Everything's working across the state west uh, to east, at least up here uh, north of I-10. And that's because we have that overrunning situation underway. So the front pushes all the way to the south. We're in the cool air and then you get the southwesterly flow aloft that goes right over top of that. And that generally creates some of that light precipitation, which is what we're dealing with today. Uh, also a lot of cloud cover when you get those overrunning situations. So uh, that'll keep temperatures down. 47 right now, Waco. 42 Abilene, 46 in San Angelo. We're at 51, so we did gain a degree there. And the most places in the hill country in the 40s, everyone else in the 50s, 51 Gonzalez, 52 Kennedy, and a little closer look here, 47 in Holotus, 45 Bernie stage, 50 right now at Stinson with cloudy skies there. And you can see the situation outside. We're not going to see any sun today, probably not tomorrow either, with uh, northerly winds right now at about 8 miles per hour. And uh, look at the 24-hour temperature change. We're about 21 degrees cooler than we were 24 hours ago, so it shows you the impact of this cold front. It was fairly significant. The winds picked up quite a bit, and we are seeing a breezy day today with temperatures or winds uh, 5 to 15 miles per hour for the most part. We've seen a few gusts maybe a little bit higher than that. I'll caution you, winds are going to pick up even more tomorrow. We'll get another sur surge of cooler air, and that will pick up the northerly winds probably in the 15 to 20 mile per hour range, and we could see some gusts higher than that. But with the wind today, we are seeing a little bit of a wind chill. 47 is what it feels like in Kerrville, 42 in Fredericksburg. No wind chill here in San Antonio because temperatures are above 50 degrees. Looking at the wind gust forecast, we'll see wind gusts up around 20 miles per hour perhaps today at their highest. They'll die down a little bit tonight. And then tomorrow, I do think they'll pick up again with that secondary surge. So we could see some wind gusts, 25, maybe as high as 30 miles per hour. So it'll be a breezy day tomorrow. Futurecast shows just those uh, light showers lifting north. A few more showers here and there tomorrow. With that secondary surge, that should bring in some drier air. So I think our rain chances start to taper off tomorrow afternoon. And then maybe some sun on Friday. It looks like we'll start to see some clearing as that drier air sort of erodes the clouds by midday Friday. Temperatures today, 52 by 4 o'clock. We'll be down to 50 by 6 o'clock, 48 midnight. We'll keep rain chances in the forecast through the overnight hours. And then tomorrow, 50, that's it. 40% chance of showers and windy. 54 Friday with some clearing skies, but the clouds build back in this weekend. Another chance of rain Sunday, but it does warm up. Second half of the weekend looks 
much warmer and warmer next week too. Much better in every way. Yes, less, uh, less jackets around, I would imagine. Okay, yeah. thank you. Seems like we almost forgot there was actually an NBA basketball season going on. It's been so long since they played. Yeah, and the Spurs really needed it, though, I think, to rest up and probably just collect their thoughts as well for the last 28 games of the regular season for the Spurs because they have a lot of work to do to get back into the playoff picture. And it starts with their first practice today in a very long time at a men's college basketball. Baylor set a big 12 mark last night. Coming up. a nice week away from the game. The Spurs will reconvene at their practice facility this afternoon to practice and get in a good workout before resuming the rodeo road trip Friday against the Utah Jazz. Due to scheduling, the Spurs haven't practiced all that much this season, opting at times to get extra rest instead. Now the Spurs are 23 and 31 and have 28 games left in the regular season. They need to get red hot to have any chance of making the postseason to keep their incredible playoff streak alive. An NBA record tying 22 consecutive seasons since Tim Duncan's rookie season. So the Spurs will play at the Utah Jazz Friday night at 8. Utah is fourth in the Western Conference, the Spurs 10th. Now, in case you missed it, the Spurs part of ways with Damari Carroll. Their official announcement says the veteran forward has been waived. That's after his contract was bought out by the team. Carroll originally signed a three-year, $21 million deal with the Spurs during free agency last summer after Marcus Morris backed out of his two-year deal with the Spurs for $20 million to sign with the Knicks for one year, $15 million. Carroll still had $2.3 million left this season, another $6.6 .6 for next season, and $1.3 million guaranteed in his third year. This comes after Carroll only played in 15 games this season, averaging just 2.2 points, 2.1 rebounds, and nine minutes of action after averaging 11 points in 67 games with the Nets last season. Now he's free to sign with any team, and the Rockets appear to be next. In men's college basketball, number one, Baylor at Oklahoma. The Bears looking to set a Big 12 record of 23 wins in a row. Second half, Sooners Christian Doolittle sinks the floater, and the Sooners are down one, but that's as close as they would get. Bears' Jared Butler takes over from there. No upset last night, less than 10 minutes ago. He comes up with the steal, then races back for the bucket and foul. Free throw, no good. Then Butler started to rein in three-pointers. He made five on the night to lead all with 22 points, and Baylor takes it 65-54 to for its Big 12 record 23rd consecutive win. Baylor is 24-1 overall, 13-0 in conference play. In women's college basketball, Baylor defeated Texas Tech 77-62. The second-ranked Lady Bears are 24-1, 13-0 in Big 12. Baylor's head coach, Kim Mulkey, becomes the fastest Division I coach ever, man or woman, to reach 600 wins, needing just 700 games to do so. Yesterday, the San Antonio Missions held a press conference at Wolf Stadium to announce a new partnership with Bill Miller Barbecue, now available at the park. Barbecue and baseball. Sounds like a great combo to me. When we looked at all the opportunities we had, we had to rank and prioritize what we thought fits best. A, our customer and, and our employees who enjoy coming to baseball games, and that just was a natural partnership for us. And so it made logical sense when we stepped back and said, okay, San Antonio is a market we've done well in. What do they enjoy? What do they love? Obviously, we all love the Spurs. Baseball is right there with it. And me personally, I love baseball. Grew up dreaming of playing in the big. So it was a natural marriage for us. All right, so hot dogs, peanuts, Cracker Jacks, barbecue. And sweet tea. And that sweet tea. God, you got to love it. There you go. <laughs> We're calling for a mascot. There you go. All right. Sweet tea mascot. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. If you find yourself overeating, speaking of barbecue, you might want to think about how much quality sleep you're getting, how these two things could be linked. And coming up new today at 5, when cooking or baking, a hand mixer can get the job done, but a stand mixer can make your job easier. So whether you're beating, churning, or whipping, which mixers are rated best? A 12 on your side report today at 5, coming up after entertainment tonight. Democratic presidential candidate Michael Bloomberg participates in his first debate tonight. Five other candidates are slated to be on the stage with Bloomberg just days before the Nevada caucuses on Saturday. And they have all shown an ability to, and an eagerness to go after Bloomberg. Yeah, CNN's Arlette Signs has the latest for us. 
Michael Bloomberg on the debate stage for the first time tonight, but he won't be receiving a warm welcome from his Democratic rivals. Anybody here worth $60 billion, you can run for president. Bloomberg has spent over $400 million in TV, radio, and digital ads across the country. But his team argues there is more to his campaign than money. Mike uh, believes that Donald Trump is an existential threat to this country. His reelection poses a huge, enormous challenge to America. So he will spend whatever it takes to get Donald Trump out of office. The former New York City mayor holding mock debate sessions in recent days to prepare. Three candidates previewing their attacks on Bloomberg at CNN town halls last night. I actually thought he should be on the debate stage because I don't think you should just be able to buy your way to the presidency. But I do think it's a bit obscene that we have somebody who, by the way, chose not to contest in Iowa, in Nevada, uh, in South Carolina, in New Hampshire. He said, I don't have to do that. I'm worth $60 billion. Do you think Michael Bloomberg is trying to buy the Democratic nomination for president? Yes. <laughs> what else do you call it when you dip into your endless reserves of millions and billions and don't go through the process of campaigning. Pete Buttigieg, who leads the delegate count right now, also taking aim at frontrunner Bernie Sanders. We're asking people to choose between a revolution and a billionaire. I just don't think that's speaking to where most of us are right now. Sanders trying to disavow the tactics that some of his supporters have taken. There are people out there who want to divide the progressive movement. We can have a debate about the issues, but I do not believe in online bullying. End of discussion. I'm Elizabeth Warren. I'm going, the woman who is going to beat Donald Trump. Elizabeth Warren losing her voice on the campaign trail, but tweeting this, apparently comparing Bloomberg to Trump, writing, at least now primary voters can get a live demonstration of how we each take on an egomaniac billionaire. Joe Biden is hoping for a strong finish in Nevada after disappointing showings in Iowa and New Hampshire. We choose unity over division. We choose, we choose compassion over cruelty. And maybe most importantly, we choose truth over lies. Truth over lies. So folks, it's time for us to get up. 11 people have been either pardoned or had their sentence commuted by President Trump. The president announcing the pardons yesterday. Many who were pardoned were found guilty of white collar crimes or corruption, including Eddie DiBartolo Jr., the former owner of the San Francisco 49ers. He pled guilty in 1998 to failing to report a felony in a bribery case. And former New York Police Commissioner Bernard Carrick, who served time for, in prison for tax fraud and lying to officials. Now many are wondering if the president will pardon Roger Stone, who is facing sentencing in a federal courtroom tomorrow. I haven't given it any thought. In the meantime, he's going through a process, but I think he's been treated very unfairly. President Trump also commuted the 14-year sentence of former Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich. He was convicted on corruption charges for attempting to sell former President Obama's Senate seat. Illinois Republicans slammed the president's decision. They called Blagojevich, quote, the face of public corruption in Illinois. Outside with light cam, let's set it up to 51 degrees, still very cloudy and kind of wet in some places and windy in other places. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's it's more of a February type day out there. But the cloudy skies, there's a little bit of drizzle coming down. We've got some showers on the radar, too. This sort of pattern is going to continue into tomorrow. So not much changes as we go through uh, tonight and really early tomorrow morning. There's a look at the Doppler radar. You see some of the showers we're talking about. Uh, some of those moving in around San Antonio at this hour and then more moderate rain as you get out towards uh, Gonzales and just north of I-10. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. And most of this activity moving through San Antonio now is just very light. But we have seen some wet roads there on Transguide, so it's it's still going to be there. You still may have to use your windshield wipers. And even if uh, you're not seeing it there on radar, there still could be some drizzle coming down. 51 degrees at the airport right now. 47 Holotus, 45 Bernie Stage, 49 Bandera, 52 right now in Hondo. Everybody's dealing with the cloudy conditions and temperatures. Well, they just won't warm up much. 52 this afternoon, 48 by midnight. And the next three days stays pretty cool coming up tomorrow. 50 degrees cloudy and somewhat windy, but 54 Friday that we start the warming up process and then 58 by Saturday with 
mostly cloudy skies. Guys? Thank you so much, Justin. If you deal with chronic pain and you have trouble sleeping, medicinal cannabis may not be the best long-term solution. Max Massey reports new research shows you could have a tolerance. Researchers at the University of Haifa analyzed the sleep quality of 128 people who were treated at a pain clinic. What they found is that one in four said they always woke up early and were not able to go back to sleep. One in five reported always finding it difficult to fall asleep and around one in four said they woke up during the night. They also found that the increased frequency of use of medicinal cannabis was associated with greater difficulty falling asleep and more frequent waking up during the night. The findings of this study are important because there is increasing use of medicinal cannabis for purposes like sleeping in patients with chronic pain. And with long-term use, it may not prove helpful for those with sleep problems. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. A good night's sleep does the body good. It could also lead to more healthy choices. According to research published in the Journal of the American Heart Association, people who aren't getting good sleep tend to eat too much sugar and other unhealthy foods. Mm. The study looked at nearly 500 women between the ages of 20 and 76. One third of them had trouble sleeping and reported overeating. The study suggests one reason for the connection between sleep and eating is that when we are sleep deprived, our hormones stimulate hunger. Insomnia can also trigger the parts of your brain that make it harder for you to control cravings and rash decisions. The voicemail you think was left by a loved one may have been a big scam. Details about a scam alert from the Better Business Bureau after the break. And girls high school basketball playoffs underway. Have some pretty intense matchups coming up. Larry Mears will have the highlights from a couple of those last night. If you have a Ring account, there are some new privacy and security features to be aware of. A look at those changes in your consumer news. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. We want to take you back to that developing story on the northwest side right now. You are looking live at Stonehaven. This is off of Litchfield. There is a standoff that's been underway there for a couple of hours, and fire crews have now arrived on the scene. It appears they are battling a fire again. It's not clear how that fire started. They were first called. The initial call was actually for a vehicle fire. When they arrived, that's when the standoff began. But now there's uh, apparently something else on fire. You can see they're trying to put that out. A long distance water cannon is what they have out there now. So yeah, we're not quite sure what they're shooting the water toward, mm. but our news crews are far enough away from the scene to where we cannot even get good information right now about what has developed thus far. We do have Stephanie Cerna on on uh, the scene right there. And as soon as the police release some information, we will bring it to you here on KSAT 12. We do know it's a somewhat of a dangerous situation because they had to move Stephanie earlier when she first arrived at the scene. They, they kept them far enough back to uh, keep them out of danger, so. We will continue to follow it. Meantime, in consumer news, a warning about a scam involving voicemail. The Better Business Bureau is warning that scammers can now use new voice cloning software. The technology mimics voices from audio samples. And from there, scammers will create voicemail messages to convince you to send them money. The nonprofit says the scam may hit businesses first, but they don't expect it to stop there. Amazon working to protect Ring security camera users' accounts. Users will now have to enter a one-time code, share it via email or text, when logging in to see the feed from their cameras. Now, while Ring already offered two-factor authentication, authentic, I can't authentication. Thank you. Authentication to customers. The second layer of verification is mandatory. Ring says the added feature helps prevent unauthorized users from gaining access to your account, even if they have your username and password. The company is also giving users the ability to opt out of sharing information with third-party service providers. Apple is warning that it'll miss sales targets because of the spread of the coronavirus, and that is sending worries through the marketplace. Apple blames the virus for slowdowns in iPhone production and weaker demand in China. Most of Apple's manufacturing happens in China. Apple temporarily closed all of its stores in China, and even though they're slowly reopening now, bouncing back is going to take some time. We're going to go outside with live cam and authenticate the weather forecast. Authentication. Nice. Authentication. Nice. Yes. Thank you.
Uh, yes, well, it is authentically cold. Is that even a word? I don't know. Uh, Works for me. 53 degrees was the high this morning. It actually was achieved at midnight. 49 was the low, and we just haven't varied much. We're, we're at about 51 degrees so far today. Uh, 68 the average, 45 the average low. Records are 96 and 23. Those are not in jeopardy. We've only picked up a hundredth of an inch of rain. That's it. This has all been really light. Uh, but we are expecting a few more showers uh, through the evening hours. We'll take another look at that radar coming up. This case at Rodeo Remembers is powered by the all new 2020 Chevy Silverado HD. In the early days of rodeo, the talents of both cowboys and cowgirls were on display, but one accident led to a major setback. As America pushed west in the 1800s, women learned to rope and ride, but working herds wasn't considered women's work. Then in the late 1800s, Wild West shows made cowgirls like Annie Oakley and Lucille Mulhall famous. By the turn of the century, women began to rodeo. The first female professional athlete was Prairie Rose Henderson. Known for her flashy fashion sense and daring saddle skills, she became a world champion bronc rider in 1911. By the 20s, women competed in a third of the nation's rodeos, but a tragedy in 1929 would change everything. Bronc rider Bonnie McCarroll's foot got caught in her stirrup after being thrown. Her tragic death changed attitudes, and soon rodeos replaced cowgirl competitions with ranch girl beauty contests. Things began to slowly change in 1942. Women's barrel racing became an accepted rodeo event and the first all-girl rodeo was held in Bonham, Texas. These rodeos were exhibitions, not official competitions, but they were not beauty pageants. A dispute over a calf roping event in Amarillo led to the formation of the Girls Rodeo Association in 1948. In the decades that followed, the GRA advanced the role of women in rodeo. In 1981, they changed their name to the Women's Professional Rodeo Association. Thanks to them, today's rodeos are proof that you can't keep a cowgirl down. Good look at history there. We're going to jump back into some weather history. Let's go back three years. You probably remember this one. This is the anniversary of the tornadoes here in San Antonio that did do quite a bit of damage, especially there along Linda Drive near the quarry. We had an EF2 that night, also an EF1 in the Northern Hills subdivision. It was a busy day. Goes to show you that in February we can see a, a range of weather from severe weather to cold and damp weather like what we're seeing today. Uh, some showers still working through San Antonio at this hour. We have more persistent rain off to the north that generally is staying north of us. We've had just uh, a little area of showers here moving through uh, San Antonio. Maybe some moderate rain mixed in here or there, but the, uh, the better rain out towards Lavernia and Gonzales and now moving up towards Seguin. You'll get a little bit of uh, shower activity and still some light drizzle too coming down. 51 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 47. Northerly winds at about 8 miles per hour and temperatures Generally in the 50s, or at least right around 50 here in Bear County, you go north, you'll run into some 40s, 49 Curvo, 48 Comfort, 49 right now in Bandera, and uh, some warmer temperatures down to the south, 55 Catula, 56 right now in Beeville, but the clouds holding strong everywhere. We're not looking for sun today or tomorrow. It's probably not until Friday that the clouds start to break up a little bit and we see some sun. Wind is there. It's not too bad, but we're talking 5 to 15 miles per hour here. We have winds at about 8 miles per hour. So where those temperatures are below 50 degrees, we are seeing some wind chill values in the 40s. That wind does just make it feel a little bit cooler out there. 49 is what it feels like in Kerrville. 41 Rock Springs, 42 right now in Junction. Wind gusts could go as high as 20 miles per hour today. They'll die down a little bit tonight and then pick back up tomorrow. We'll see some pretty hefty gusts, I think, as we get into tomorrow afternoon with a secondary surge of some cooler air. So here's how the future cast plays out. More showers today off and on. Everything's going to be very, very light. And as we get into tomorrow, we'll be watching that secondary push of colder air that I was talking about. Really, it's just sort of a push of drier air, too. So it takes a lot of the rain with it. I think by tomorrow afternoon, our rain chances go away. It'll just be sort of windy and chilly and cloudy. And then by Friday morning, that dry air starts to erode some of those clouds. So we could actually see some sun on Friday, and that would boost temperatures back up into the 50s for highs and eventually 60s by the end of the weekend. Forecast for today, 51, 2 o'clock, 52 by 4 o'clock. Temperatures don't change much. That's the bottom line. 60% chance of rain, winds a little bit breezy from time to time. And then uh, 50 tomorrow with a 40% chance of showers, mainly early in the day. 54 Friday. 
get some chilly temperatures Saturday morning, uh, but mostly cloudy skies Saturday, 58, 69 on Sunday. Was another slight chance of rain, although it's a brief window. And then we're back in the 70s by Monday and Tuesday. Well, we'll save on sunscreen. Is yep. that a good? <laughs> well, listen, we, we had a pretty good streak here of some, some good That's weather. True. So That's we were true. We didn't really have winter. Of, yeah. Of clouds, yeah. You're right. Yep. Major League Baseball having a hard time getting out of the gates. Yeah. The Astros controversy, and now the commissioner steps in it. I mean, this is just... A lot of players are unhappy because the commissioner, Rob Manfred, did not suspend any of the players, and a lot of players from other teams are saying the commission is clueless. Well, his comment about the World Series trophy, calling it a piece of metal, certainly didn't help his cause, and in the NBA, Spurs are running out of time to make the postseason. Coming up. Now that the NBA All-Star break is wrapping up, the Spurs will hit the practice court today to get ready for the final two games of the rodeo road trip. Friday at Utah, a Sunday at Oklahoma City. Spurs find themselves in a strange position outside of the playoff picture. Now for the past 22 seasons, they would normally be playing for one of the top seeds in a home court advantage this time of the season. But this season, they're fighting just to make the postseason. The Spurs 23 and 31 mark is their worst at the All-Star break since the 1996-97 season, which is the last time they missed the playoffs. So here's how the West looks today. LA Lakers are number one, four games ahead of second place at Denver. The Clippers are third with Utah sitting fourth. Houston is fifth, OKC sixth, Dallas seventh, and Memphis is eighth place. San Antonio is 10th, five games out of that final playoff spot. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Jason Witten wants to return next season. The question is, will it be with the Dallas Cowboys? A 37-year-old made that announcement at the Jason Witten Collegiate Man of the Year ceremony in a meeting with the media. 11-time Pro Bowler says he wants to return for his 17th season in the NFL, even if it's not with the Cowboys. This after coming out of a one-year retirement to return to Dallas last season. I want to play. I think I want to explore that. I think it's the right fit in the, in the role. Uh, I feel like I still have something to give. Um, you know, we'll see where that takes place. And you know, I, of course, I want that to be the Dallas Cowboys, and will always be a Dallas Cowboy. But also understand that that might mean that um, you know, with all the changes, I have to go somewhere else. Future Hall of Fame quarterback Drew Brees says he's good to go for his 20th season with the New Orleans Saints. Now, the NFL's all-time career passing leader has to work out a contract with the Saints. In girls basketball, the high school playoffs tipped off last night with a doubleheader at Littleton Gym with Reagan and Holmes. Rattlers ball, Kelsey Hawkins goes inside to Christine Walla for a layup. The Huskies now going inside as well to Alyssa Martinez, lefty off the window. But Reagan responds behind Hawkins. She comes up with the steal. Then she takes it back for the bucket and the foul. And the Rattlers are advancing in the postseason 68 to 51. Next up, Johnson Jaguars against the Brandeis Broncos in their first round matchup. The Broncos, Kia Herrera on the fast break gets the layup to fall. The Jaguars, Jashel Johnson now drives into the lane and finishes with a bucket herself. But the Broncos kick back. Marissa Seaton going baseline and pulls up for the floater over the Johnson defender. And the final from Littleton, 65-63. Brandeis takes it. In an effort to make a rhetorical point, I referred to the World Series trophy in a disrespectful way. And I want to apologize for that. There's no excuse for it. Um, I made a mistake. I was trying to make a point, but I should have made it in a more effective way. And again, I want to apologize for it. Oh, he's feeling the heat. MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred said he's sorry for calling the World Series trophy a piece of metal. He said that while making a rhetorical point about the possibility of stripping the Astros of their 2017 championship for that signal stealing What's he waiting situation. On? Not going to happen. You don't think so? Nah. It's you not think they take that? Nope. It's going to be a long season. Yes, it will. All right. <laughs> but SA Live's only an hour, and we've got a preview of that right now from Market Square. Yep, indeed. And food. Oh, on a day like this, you need something yes. just warm and good. Yes. When the temperatures are taking a dip, how about a warm, slow-cooked meal to just warm you up? 
Yep, it mm -hmm. smells good too, and it tastes good. And Shailene McNeil, registered dietitian with Beef Love in Texas, our dear friend, is yeah. here. And you're talking about the versatility of different cuts of beef, right? Mm -hmm. Love this, because we're going to do a brisket. We always think about smoking a brisket. It can be kind of overwhelming, but we're going to show you different ways to cook a brisket in a slow cooker so it could not get easier and you get that delicious brisket flavor. So okay. we're right. really excited about this. Real simple to do. Yes. Simple, so easy. Drop the beat. Boom, oh, chicka yes. Chicka boom, chicka pop, chicka boom, chicka I love your chicka dance moves. Thank you. <laughs> That's my drop of the beat. Three different music <laughs> stages, fun for the whole family. We've got your sneak peek at the Drop the Beat Music Festival and Car Show, and of course, some of the folks and musicians here today. Hip hop, rock, and Tejano. Hey, and speaking of music, what's your jam? What's the, the one the thing that you're really into nowadays? That's a social question. The one question. that makes really. you do the move like Boom, this? Chicka -bop, chicka -bop. Anything by Matt Caldwell, <laughs> wonderful country singer. So oh, oh, she knows him very sweet. well. So. Oh, and we are going to boot, scoot, and boogie into Rodeo Fashion Week. Jen Tobias Trusty is kicking it at the Lucchese store to stomp out some style. And big adventure, we're soaring high. It's coming up next on SA Live.